Hey everybody, welcome back for another project for Intro to Studio Art. Uh, today we are going to be talking a little bit about sculpture. Our next project is going to be exploring sculpture. And for our purposes, sculpture is going to be creating an artwork in three dimensions. So we're thinking about a form that has length, that has width, and that has height. Uh, and oftentimes we think about sculpture as being in the round or the notion that you can experience it or see it from more than one angle or one side. Um, and for our purposes, we're going to be thinking about creating representational sculpture. Um, and we're going to be exploring um, everyday materials like cardboard and paper uh, and ways that we can create that into new and interesting forms. So to begin with, I want to talk about this is going to be kind of a three part project. We are going to be first doing some very easy, uh, simple research. Uh, second, we're going to be creating a maquette or a small model. And then finally, you'll be creating your final uh, larger scale sculpture. And uh, those three assignments will be posted soon, and I'll be updating accordingly. So let's talk a little bit about sculpture before we begin. Share my screen here. So I decided to just lecture off of some websites today because uh, these are places that you can go to find more work and do more research as well. First one is just a simple site called Time Out, which is um, a magazine that, that um, is in a lot of larger cities and oftentimes highlights art exhibitions, cultural events, and things like that. But I found this, uh, this page called The Top Famous Sculptures of All Time, which of course is just one person's opinion maybe supported by some evidence of research and history. But I think what it highlights are some ideas about sculpture that we should consider. Um, so if we go down their list, we can see the first and very famous sculpture called the Venus of Willendorf. Uh, this was a piece that was found um, in uh, Austria and it depicts a female form that's been carved out of stone and it's thought to be dated back to uh, 28,000 or two, sorry, 28,000 or 25,000 BC. Uh, and some of the earliest forms that we find from this period are these um, oftentimes thought of as fertility objects or objects of women who are pregnant or very, uh, um, or highlighted for their features uh, in fertility. So this uh, earliest form is a representational figurative form, which we see a lot of in early sculpture is the representational and figurative, but also thinking about this idea of types of materials. So stone obviously is a very early one, mostly probably because it was able to be preserved over that long period of time. Uh, moving quickly into the Egyptian period, we're gonna rapidly go through time here. Um, we have the bust of Nefertiti, Queen Nefertiti. And uh, this piece is carved limestone that's been covered in terracotta or a clay and then painted. Uh, and you can see an extreme likeness to the form here. Um, Nefertiti is interesting because uh, there's a bit of mystery behind her background and uh, her mummy was never found either. So uh, what we have are these very elegant sculpted forms of her um, and uh, highly detailed and painted in that way as well. But again, thinking about material, the carved stone, the terracotta clay, uh, the painted surface to really bring that forward. Um, this is a pretty fascinating site. Um, so this is um, a tomb uh, of Sri Huan, uh, an emperor of China who died in 2010 BC. And as they excavated a tomb, they found 8,000 terracotta clay uh, soldiers that were all sculpted out of clay, each one of them unique. In addition to that, they found 670 horses uh, and 130 chariots and everything else that goes along with them, weapons and uh, all, the, all the things that to go along. So here we have this amazing uh, display of sculpted form of uh, clay uh, terracotta fired uh, figures, all life-size, all different, uh, and entombed in this large uh, burial ground. Um, so here again, we're thinking a little bit about this idea of uh, sculpture as being something that can take uh, the uh, form and bring it into a new material or a new context. So what happens when we take an object and create it out of a different type of material 
And so we've seen stone, we've seen stone with, with terracotta glazes, and this is a, another terracotta piece as well. This is a fascinating site to, um, to look for, uh, research it online, you'll find lots of really interesting images based on it. Uh, moving into the Roman period, we have uh, a very famous sculpture, Lacon and his sons, uh, these three figures being attacked by a massive serpent, and this entire piece carved out of a, um, marble. So imagine uh, how hard a mar you know, marble stone is and what it takes to sort of carve that and then finish it down to very smooth surfaces, especially thinking about elements like the figurative form, the folds of the fabric, the hair, those elements that are really highly delicate. So highly skilled sculptural form, a lot of action and movement in this as well, which is something that's a bit new into this sort of period of sculpture. But the repetition of what we see are, you know, this idea of kind of permanence, right? So, so figures and forms that are made out of materials that are meant to last. Here's Michelangelo's David, uh, again, carved out of marble. Um, here's another example of a mar marble sculpture um, uh, by Bernini. Uh, and as we move down this list, you can see that there's a repetition of this idea of forms, especially if you think about some of the object forms, the sword, the, the fabric folds, uh, materials that are rendered to look lifelike out of other materials, right? So that's something that we see a lot of in sculpture. Um, as we move to more current times, we have a piece by uh, Degas, Edgar Degas, uh, who is famous for his paintings of the ballet. Uh, and in this case, a small wax sculpture that he created of a 14-year-old dancer. Uh, and uh, this then was cast out of bronze. So part of the reason for making some of these was that the wax then could be repeated, uh, could be cast and molded, and then those um, molded uh, wax forms could be then cast in bronze. And again, this idea of a per more permanent sort of um, form out of those. Um, also, you know, along with the bronze is this actual um, tutu that was made of fabric and tool. So, so those things are a combination of materials kind of coming together, something that is more permanent, something that is more meager, the, the fabric. Um, uh, this is Rodin, another bronze sculpture. Again, massive figurative forms in permanent materials. As we move into the 20th century though, we have Pablo Picasso who changes things quite a bit and along with many other artists start to think about making art in new ways. So breaking from representation into something we call cubism and also exploring other materials. This is Pablo Picasso's guitar, which is made out of cardboard, right? So it's a very everyday disposable meager material, but highly manipulative uh, ways of new, uh, new ways of thinking about presenting it and obviously changes the shift of form altogether. So that's kind of what we're gonna be thinking about, right? Here's Picasso's guitar at the MoMA, and you can see it displayed behind this plexiglass form because it is extremely fragile, um, but carries a really interesting idea of, of space and form and composition into a, a very meager everyday sort of material. So, Taking that forward into contemporary art, we can find many examples of artists who are using all kinds of different everyday materials in their work. This is an artist named Chris Gilmore, uh, who I really enjoy his work. Uh, he'll make life-size sculptures out of cardboard. So this is an Aston Martin car. It's to scale. It's as large as a normal car. And every single facet of it has been made out of cardboard, down to all the control panels, steering the interior parts, the license plates, the wheels. You can even see some of the cardboard that's been recycled. It's not all clean. We can see the, um, the symbols and signs that are on them as well. Um, other examples, uh, here's a, a wheelchair that's been highly rendered with different colored cardboards, the folds in the seat, the roundness of the wheels, the spokes, everything in form and detail. Uh, really fascinating sort of shapes and forms. Uh, here's a motorcycle. Again, all of those elements, every single detail rendered in just that simple cardboard, which I, I find really fascinating. And then some smaller objects as well. Here's a chop saw, a globe, a few more globes, and a grandfather clock, 
microscope. So you get the idea, these, these objects become really interesting and significant when we shift the material and shift their, uh, their context. Um, so that's Chris Gilmore's website. You can check that out. Um, this is Peter Callison, another artist using some pretty meager material. So this is just paper. Uh, he's often known for these single sheet paper sculptures that he creates. And you here you can see kind of a drawing of a figurative form. And out of that figurative form, he uses the paper and folds it into the skeletal form. Um, there's a detail shot there. Another example of a similar composition. Again, the cutout negative spaces are then folded up into the figurative, figurative uh, skeletal form. Even the chair itself, you can see, and they become these almost shadow-like pieces. Uh, here's a hummingbird and a flower. Some detail there. This is a wonderful large-scale piece of a tree, and out of the tree form falls a skeleton. And as we can look at the details, see you can see many different details of the branches and petals and all the limbs all coming together into that form. So paper is something that is highly versatile that could be used in many different ways and forms. And how those contexts get shifted become a really interesting way of playing with design. Uh, another artist that uses paper is um, Tom Sachs. Tom Sachs created a series of these uh, works called value meals, uh, which are, they look like McDonald's value meals that you would buy, but they're made out of high end fashion brand um, packaging, right? So this is uh, packaging by Hermes and we have French fries and a soda, a hamburger box, a tray, all made out of those uh, materials. And so this brings into question the idea of value, right? So what is the value of art? What is the value of fashion? What is the value of fast food? Uh, and how do those things kind of relate to one another? So there's a whole series of these that were created. So this is a site called artsy.net, which is a really great site that has tons of artwork to find and locate on there as well. Uh, let's look at the Phillips Auction House. This is um, where um, you know, folks will sell artworks, buy artworks at auction. Uh, here's uh, another value meal. Um, this is made out of um, a Tiffany's box and wrappers and uh, packaging. And here you can see this piece has sold for 23,000 pounds, right? So out of those disposable materials, a really good art idea and uh, interesting context brings to about this idea of value, right? So again, you can see more of these um, at the Phillips Auction House, he's got a few more here. Let's see, I think there's another one. Yeah, here is um, Prada, Prada Burger. Uh, so that gives you a sense of how you can, how the, the paper and the, and the material itself can have meaning that you then shift the meaning by making other objects out of it. All right, and then finally, um, let's, sorry, scroll up here. This is uh, Colossal, which is another great website for finding work. Uh, a lot of interesting artwork on here. Um, this is Yuken Teruda, Teruda, <laughs> sorry, uh, um, it's the morning. Um, so this work, you can see a similar way, taking these high-end fashion bags and then carve, cutting out these paper form trees that become these small little dioramas that when we look through them, we get this wonderful shape of organic form and the light cascading through highlights the trees in these really great ways. Here you can see this cut out of the top. And then as we look inside, we see this really illuminated image of the tree. So a very simple idea and design. Here you can see a series of these and how they're displayed. The lighting becomes really critical and important. Um, the color of the bag and how that shifted. You can see the trunk is white and the leaves are gold. Uh, and then how they're highlighted and displayed becomes interesting as well. So that, that sort of part, part of this proposition. Okay, so the project to start is going to be a simple research project. What I'd like you to do to begin with is two parts. I want you to create a simple PDF to submit. In this PDF, I'd like you to research three different artists making work out of cardboard or paper and, um, and uh, pick images that you think are really interesting and respond to. For each one of those images, there should be a total of three, one for each artist you choose. Um, include the artist's name, the title of the artwork, the year it was created, and if you can find that information, the size so we know what scale it is. 
And then below that, just simply write a brief statement about why you think these works are interesting. And then part two is I want you to go out into the world and think about objects that you might be able to render, right? And so if you find something like, I don't know, a little teacup or something like that, then take a photo of it, consider how it might be rendered out of paper, or, or uh, and then also um, write a little uh, idea about why you'd wanna choose that. So these objects can have meaning and significance to you. So with that in mind, um, on your PDF also include three images of objects that you may be thinking about for this project. Now, the way that we're gonna be working is you either take a small object and you scale it up, you make it bigger than it actually is, okay? Or you take a very large object and you scale it down, you make it smaller than it actually is, right? So we're gonna be playing with scale and how that scale shift can, can be a meaning as well. So if you're gonna render your car, you know, you're gonna to have to take lots of photos of it all the way around and get some measurements of it. Uh, if you're gonna enlarge a teacup, that's a little bit more, um, you know, you can actually have it in front of you and use those measurements accordingly and work from it. But again, this PDF, this research study, I'll post it, but it should have um, images of your research, artists that are using paper to create sculptures. And second, it should have some ideas about what types of objects you could imagine creating for this full project. Your final project will be a, you know, a paper sculpture uh, that you replicate an object. Um, so any questions, shoot me an email and I will talk soon.